Hello, everyone, and welcome to another webinar presented by the Employees Retirement System of Georgia. Today, we will be focusing on the legislative process within Georgia's General Assembly, specifically focusing on bills that impact state retirement systems. But before I dive in, I wanted to remind everyone that ERSGA administers separate and distinct cost-sharing multiple employer defined benefit pension plans for various agencies and departments of the state of Georgia. We also serve as the state social security administrator for all political subdivisions of the state, and we administer benefits for 130,000 active employees and over 52,000 retirees. And we also manage the investments for a $13 billion fund. As always, I want to remind everyone that this presentation was developed as a way to provide general information about the legislative process. Should any of the information presented here conflict with law, the laws will always take precedence. But first, I want to introduce myself. My name is Ashley Waller, and I've been with the Employees Retirement System of Georgia since the fall of 2017 as their legal and policy research analyst. However, my full-time state government service dates back to 2016 when I was hired on as an associate policy analyst with the Georgia State Senate Research Office covering both retirement and science and technology. And before that, began in 2014 with part-time experience as a legislative aide to State Senator Chuck F. Stetler, who was Senate Retirement Chairman in 2015 and 2016. I have a passion for helping people and I try to find solutions two things which I enjoy most about my job here at ERSGA. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to give a brief overview of what we'll talk about today. First, I'll touch on the foundations of ERSGA policy and discuss where the laws and fundamental guidelines for ERSGA and ERSGA's plans are set. Next, I will provide the basics of the Georgia General Assembly when they begin and in the legislative session along with the number of working days they are active. Then I will go into the meat of the legislative process by discussing the general procedures for bills in the Georgia General Assembly along with specifics about retirement legislation. And lastly, I will tie it all together by talking about ERSGA plan specific legislation and go into more detail about the resources we here at ERSGA offer members and retirees in order to educate and keep them updated on potential legislative changes that might occur and impact them. So first, the foundations. The creation and majority of all the rules and guidelines for state retirement systems come from, comes from Georgia law, also referred to as Georgia code or statute. Often, when code is cited, it is read as OCGA, which stands for the Official Code of Georgia Annotated. Within Georgia law, there are currently 53 different titles. These titles are broken down into different groupings, such as Agriculture, which is Title II, or Education, which is Title 20. Title 47 contains the laws regarding the state retirement systems here in Georgia. And within that title, it's further broken down into chapters, with the following chapters being associated with the plans that ERSGA administers. Chapter two is the Employees Retirement System, or ERS. Chapter four is the Public School Employees Retirement System, or PSERS. Chapter six is the Georgia Legislative Retirement System, or LRS. Chapter 22 is the Georgia Defined Contribution Plan, also known as GDCP. Chapter 23 is the Georgia Judicial Retirement System, or JRS. And chapter 24 is the Georgia Military Pension Fund, also known as GMPF. Another chapter within Title 47 of importance is Chapter 20, also known as the Public Re Retirement System Standards. Those set the best practice funding guidelines for retirement systems governed by Title 47, and some examples of these standards and rules will be discussed in detail a bit later on in the presentation. Next, we'll discuss some basics about the Georgia General Assembly, which is also the legislative branch within the state of Georgia and contains the Georgia House of Representatives and the Georgia State Senate. The term length for each legislative cycle is two years and often referred to as the legislative biennium. The first year of a biennium is always an odd year, while the second is an even and an election year. 
Each annual legislative period is referred to as a legislative session with every session beginning on the second Monday in January with the actual date varying each year. Every legislative session is 40 days, but that's 40 working days and not calendar days. The legislature sets their schedule and oftentimes this means that they don't end until late March or April. Some important dates to note of each session are crossover day and sine die. Crossover day is the day which legislation introduced in either the House or Senate must be passed by the whole body and sent over to the others. Bill, bills that fail to be voted on by crossover day are no longer eligible for passage during that session, but will be eligible in the next, either through holding over, if it's the first year of a biennium, or through reintroduction if it's the second year. It usually varies every year, however, lately, crossover day has been the 28th day of each session. Signing die is another important day and is a big one for each session as it denotes the final day of session and the last day for all bills to be passed by the General Assembly and sent to the governor for signature. Traditionally, this day is a very busy one for legislators where they are mostly working late into the hours, work, voting on legislation. Now I'm going to discuss the general procedure and overview of how to pass a bill in the Georgia General Assembly. First, it includes the idea for a bill. This can come from any one person and for any reason. Some examples of retirement legislation may include adding or sometimes taking away different types of service purchases, including options like SIGLI for retirees, and any other type of plan changes, which includes membership eligibility or retirement benefits. For individuals with legislative suggestions, I recommend you contact your state house and Senate elected officials. They have the ability to take your idea and then get it drafted into a law. This is usually done by a group of attorneys known as legislative council, and they work at the General Assembly. They take the idea, proposed language changes, and incorporate them into bill form. For retirement bills specifically, once the bill is drafted by legislative council, it is then sent to the Department of Audits and Accounts, where it receives something called a certification from the state auditor signifying whether the bill is fiscal or non-fiscal. We will discuss these different types of retirement bills a bit later on, but it is important to note that all retirement bills must have that certification at all times throughout the legislative process. Without it, retirement bills cannot proceed to the next step, which is introduction into either the House or Senate. It's usually really easy to remember where a bill originated as Senate bills were introduced in the Senate and House bills in the House. The drafted bill and the certification for retirement bills are then placed in a bin, a box, a special place, which is often denoted by both bodies as the hopper. Once placed in the hopper, the bill is then introduced on the body's floor or read in, and then it can proceed to the next step, which is assignment to committee. After the bill is introduced and assigned to committee, and after the bill is introduced, it will be assigned to the respective subject matter topic committee. These committees include things such as agriculture, health and human services, and for retirement bills or any bill amending the Title 47, all those bills must go to the retirement committee. Once it's been referred to committee, the committee has the ability to meet, discuss, and change the bill and or vote whether to proceed with the bill in the legislative process. If the committee votes to do pass the bill, it is then sent to the Rules Committee. The Rules Committee is a separate committee in each body who reviews all the bills passed out of the other standing committees, like Retirement, Health and Human Services, and the Rules Committee then votes to create a special list of bills known as the Rules Calendar for each legislative day. This Rules Calendar will then be voted on by the full body and during special days like crossover day or signing die, the Rules Committee is known to meet sporadically and often, so that way they can change or amend the Rules Calendar, because like I mentioned before, it's a very busy day of voting and getting bills passed. 
So once it's added to the rules calendar, a bill can then be voted on by the full body. Bill passage in each body requires more than 50% of the affirming vote in order for it to continue through the legislative process. For House bills passed by the House, they then begin the process all over again, beginning with introduction in the Senate and vice versa for Senate bills in the House. Once bills have completed the entire process through both houses, and this is all done before the end of signing die, then the bills are sent to the governor's desk for either signature or veto. The governor has 40 days to either veto or sign legislation. Vetoes can be overturned with two thirds of both houses affirmative vote, and bills that the governor does not take any action nor signage or veto, they are treated like signed legislation and they will become law. And, in un and unless otherwise stated in the bill, most legislation becomes effective on July 1st of the past year. Once bills are passed, Georgia Code or OCGA that I mentioned earlier is updated yearly to reflect all of the changes that were passed during the previous year's session and signed into law. So as I mentioned previously, there are two types of retirement bills, fiscal and non-fiscal bills. The public retirement system standards in chapter 20 of Title 47 details the rules about how to handle each type of retirement bills. So this, I will talk about fiscal bills. And fiscal bills are ones that cause any type of monetary change to the retirement system, whether that is creating a new retirement system or increasing the liabilities of an existing one. The state auditor makes that determination and issues the certification with the bill denoting what type it is. The standards require that for fiscal retirement bills, the first year cost of the bill must be appropriated by the legislature. If this does not occur concurrently with the bill's passage, the bill will not go into effect and be considered null and void. This cost is determined via an, an actuarial investigation which outlays the cost and accrued liability to the retirement system or systems from the bill. Since fiscal bills have such an effect, their legislative timeline is a bit different than most. Most bills can be introduced during any session However, fiscal retirement bills can only be introduced during the first year of a legislative biennium. They can be introduced at any time during that session, at which time the corresponding House of Introduction will then consider in a meeting or meetings, either held at the end of session or during the interim, which is the break between the sessions, whether to send the fiscal bill for actuarial investigation. Fiscal bills that are sent off for investigation come back sometimes later that year and with a more detailed actuarial report that contains cost and liability information. During the second year of that same legislative biennium, the fiscal bills with actuarial investigations are eligible to proceed through the legislative process from the retirement committee as though it was a normal bill. Fiscal bills are also special in that they can be amended after being sent off. However, the amendment can only be a non-fiscal change, which means having no financial impact, or must be a fiscal change that costs less than the original bill. And like with the original bill themselves, all amendments to retirement bills must be certified by the state auditor. So the other type of retirement bill is a non-fiscal retirement bill, and it's the opposite of a fiscal bill. And they are defined by law as not affecting the cost or funding factors of a retirement system. Examples of these type of bills include adding education and training requirements for trustees of public retirement systems, along with the addition of the Sigley option. However, like with fiscal retirement bills, Non-fiscal bills have their own requirements, however, they are separate. While non-fiscal bills may be introduced during the first or second year of a legislative biennium, they must be introduced during the first 20 days of either session. If they meet the introduction requirement, non-fiscal bills can move through the normal legislative process for that legislative session and is eligible for passage within that same year. For non-fiscal bills introduced in the first year of a biennium but fail to gain passage, 
they will be eligible to continue through the pr process as introduced during the second year of that same biennium. The rules for amending non-fiscal bills are similar to those as fiscal bills, except that whereas a fiscal bill can be amended with a fiscal amendment that has a reduction in costs, only non-fiscal amendments can be made to non-fiscal bills. And the same requirement for it to contain an auditor certification still remains. So for more information regarding ERSGA plan specific legislation, we here have created an online website resource under the Education Center tab and through the Legislation and Interactive Maps link, where during session, the legislative affairs teams produces weekly legislative updates which capture an, any introduction, movement, or changes to retirement legislation affecting ERSGA administered plans. On that same web page, you can also find the most recent legislative sessions in active legislation, which details all past and signed legislation along with their effective dates and potential impact on members and retirees. Archives of all weekly updates and enacted legislation from previous sessions are also available online for you to view. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to us here at ERSGA. And my information was provided earlier, so I'm happy to answer anything specifically if you'd like to reach out to me. However, we appreciate you for attending this webinar. And as I mentioned earlier, you can visit all of the website resources. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you again, and I hope you have a wonderful day.